Everyone's telling them how wrong they are. They're too fat, they don't smell right, they're not the right color, they're not making enough money. Like, everywhere they go, they're getting all this messaging about how they're wrong. Mm -hmm. And so if you're willing to like put attention on people and approve of them mm -hmm. and you know find them right, yeah. uh, good stuff happens to you. Welcome to Modern Entrepreneur. Today we have Ezra Firestone, who is the founder and creative director of Smart Marketer, which is an information hub for digital training programs for entrepreneurs. He runs a private global network of e-commerce businesses and regularly consults for Fortune 500 companies across the US and Canada. Having worked in e-commerce as well as the nonprofit sector for over a decade, he's long been perceived as a leading expert in his field, which is totally true. Throw thank, that card thank away. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I, I love what you guys do. So thank you. Appreciate well, I love much. what you do. It's been uh, fun to have you at Entrepalooza and speaking to this place too. Um, tell me what you feel like is your unique skill set. I think that my unique skill set is communication. Mm -hmm. I really feel like things happen person to person, and yeah. what I've focused on is developing the ability to effectively communicate what I'm thinking, be honest about what's going on, and willing to listen to other people. And I think that like as you develop as a person you're going to run into the opportunity to communicate. Actually, as you go through your life, you're mm. gonna be communicating all the time. Communication yeah. is how things happen, and so um, I've put a lot of attention on um, being effective in that, in that regard, and uh, I've also put a lot of attention on my relationship. That's like my number one thing in my life, mm -hmm. is my relationship with my wife. That's oh, like yeah, what I'm, always talking about I'm up that. to. That's what I'm up to, yeah. you know, that's what I'm after. And yes, we have this really cool, amazing business that has like exploded, but it's exploded because we have an, a good, clean, open line of communication and we're honest with one another and we're constantly optimizing for more intimacy with each other and with our friends and that translates into the business. Interesting. Sounds kind of out there, but it's like really no, effective. No, that's why we brought you around. Yeah. So, um, so communication is, like you said, kind of a, a personal thing. To you have to do it all the time. You have to do so it all the time. You might as well get good at it. Yeah, you know? but you're also like, like I just read from that card, uh, yeah. you know, well known for being this like e-commerce dude, yeah. which is not, um, you know, personal. Yeah, it's like sure. um, it's it's inter intermediated through screens. Totally. Um, so how do you how do you like bring that skill, your unique skill set, to you know what you do? So when we look at our businesses, look at what we're doing right here. We yeah. are creating a piece of content that is designed to add value to a group of people's lives. Yeah. And it is in sort of topic and conversation that relates to a service that you offer. Mm. And so what we look at is how do we effectively engage people in a conversation around a topic that they're already interested in through content over time in our businesses, build intimacy, build relationship, and then say, hey, we have this thing you might be interested in. But essentially with a business, you're in communication with a group of people about a specific topic, mm -hmm. and you're relating with them around an experience that they're having, i.e., I'm a business owner and I want effective technology to communicate yeah. with my customers, mm. Entreport. Mm. I'm a woman who's over 40, and all of society is telling me that I'm wrong and that I need to stop my wrinkles and I need to inject myself with Botox, mm. and all the messaging I'm receiving is negative, well, we, have, we are engaging with a group of women who are having that experience with content in the same way that we're doing this right here. So the business is really person to person or brand to community, but it's all topically related to a conversation that they're already having. I don't know if that answered your question. No, I think it does. Uh, so uh, what you're saying is that, um, I mean, e-commerce, when I think of e-commerce, yeah. um, you know, the first strategy that leaps to mind is not typically content. Yeah. It's, um, well, e-commerce initially came from query, mm -hmm. Google, yeah. Bing, Yahoo, Amazon, it's all query intense. Like someone's mm -hmm. searching for a dog bowl, you show them a dog bowl. Yeah. But the rise of contextual visibility, Facebook, Instagram, uh, uh, you know, Google Display Network, where we're now putting messages in front of groups of people based on context that we have about them, what they're interested in, what age they are, you know, yeah. past behaviors. Mm -hmm. That now has, now all business conversations in general these days, most e-commerce businesses are starting with content. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, now you still have people who've got a thousand SKUs and they're on the shopping networks and right. stuff like that, but like there's a lot more. I think mm -hmm. that the faceless e-commerce store is dying. I think stores that have brands that have no story, no mission, no purpose, no mm -hmm. nothing beyond some crap to sell someone are not gonna be around very long, you know? Yeah, interesting. I, I, uh... I don't think about e-commerce much because I don't, you know, have like hard stuff to sell. But yeah. but it is true. There's this dang email that comes, 
that is like, I think it's Huckberry or something like that. Huckberry, yeah, they're a good brand. And look, me. you're wearing their shirt I right now. I probably am, I probably <laughs> am. Like, and their underwear, and who knows? Yeah. Uh, I probably have a Huck buck, buck knife yeah, in my pocket, shit. who knows? Um, so, uh, let's see. So, um, what's, so, you know, the next question I always ask is, what's working in your business today? Right. It sounds like we just answered that. Well, but here's what's working really, really well. Tell me. Is we have, generally businesses have like one source of visibility. They run Facebook ads, yeah. or they use Amazon, or totally. they you know, use joint ventures. They have one source of visibility, but what we're finding in business today is that the way that people consume the digital medium has changed. It used to be people sat down at desktops and laptops, they consumed for long periods of time, sales cycles were shorter. Mm -hmm. But as consumption of the internet became mobile and touch-based, the, the duration with which people consume the digital medium got much smaller, yeah. and the amount of times they're consuming it throughout a day got much larger so right. your sort of prospect to customer journey is happening over so many more touch points right. than it was just a few years ago uh -huh. like we're seeing 8 10 12 touch points and so we stage our business in awareness retargeting loyalty all of our emails all of our ads everything we do is based on does someone know about us yet? No? Okay, awareness. If they do know about us, if they visited an offer page, if they visited a blog, if they visited the shopping mm -hmm. cart, if they've engaged, if they watched a video on Facebook, yeah. we're communicating with them differently. Mm -hmm. And then if they are already a customer, that's the loyalty pillar, and we're email. communicating with them differently. Yeah. And one of the ways, I think, like a very practical thing that you can do is most people are really good at driving um, acquisition on one channel, like I said, Facebook, yeah. right? And it's harder to get like new customer acquisition to work on a bunch of different channels like yeah. Google and, and YouTube. But what you can do is once someone engages with you, once you've driven awareness to your offering, mm -hmm. then retarget them with messaging across every channel. Right. YouTube, Google Display Network, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, and you'll see a significant increase in your ROI because yeah. now you're, you know, you're in all the places that they're hanging out. And retargeting is cheap. And retargeting is cheap. Yeah. So we have gone, um, we've, we've gone a multi-channel approach to retargeting and mm -hmm. a multi-channel approach to communicating with people who are already in our customer base. Yeah. And we've seen a significant significant growth with that because now we're reaching far more people because we're leveraging more channels. Yeah, and that turns you into, I mean, we all have been talking about being like content producers for a long time, but if you're talking about now, not like a blog post, but you're talking about 20 different touch points through the customer journey, you gotta be like a content machine. Well, you don't necessarily have to. We okay. retarget with the same piece of content. So we, I have one article <laughs> in my business. I've made like $15 Wait, million dollars on one article. What? My big strategy, Wait, I'm gonna show you, yeah, okay. Here's my big strategy, okay? This is my whole thing. I do it for Smart Marketer, for Boom by Cindy Joseph, for Be Friendly, for Zipify Apps. I do the same thing in every brand. Okay. I amplify a piece of content. Huh. It's an article. A. It, it, it's, um, a piece of content. It's a piece of content. Uh -huh. One article that relates to a problem that a customer is facing. So, five makeup tips for women over 40. Mm -hmm. How I grew my Shopify store by 30%. So it's about a conversation that someone is already having. Yep. It then alludes to a solution my product, mm -hmm. which relates to the problem that they're facing, sure. skincare for women over 40, mm -hmm. apps to grow your Shopify store, and it links from that pre-sale engagement article to my offer page. Mm -hmm. This is my whole advertising strategy. Yeah. And if someone visits that article page, I retarget them with the same article. If they visit and don't make it through, I'm like, hey, you forgot to read this article. Because it's not that they weren't interested. They yeah. clicked the ad, they just got busy, or they left, or whatever. Yeah. So you can actually do a lot with one really good yeah. piece of content. We're uh, working too hard. Yeah, <laughs> dude, so software as a service, man. The way We have sold about $5 million in software in the last three years. Uh -huh. We have about uh, 1,800 people on our um, like $37, $47 software apps. And uh -huh. the way we're selling these is through pre-sell engagement content that adds value to someone's life and also then says, hey, we have this thing you might be interested in that's related to this piece of content that was helpful to you, yeah. our whole strategy. I mean, yeah, mine too, but <laughs> <laughs> yours is, sounds like it's working well for you. Um, so uh, tell me about like what you're learning personally right now. What are you excited about? What's kind of like the cutting edge for Ezra? Sure. Well, like I said, you know, what, what I'm trying to do is optimize for, like a lot of people tell you, I want to make a billion dollars and I'm trying to build this huge company. And like, I see a lot of people in our industry burning out, yeah. not particularly fulfilled, like feeling overwhelmed and so I'm optimizing for pleasure and fun and mm -hmm. intimacy and relationship. I don't want this thing that I'm building to take over my world. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been like setting really, he like, interesting thing about work is it will continue if you let it. Like it yeah. will fill the space fill that you give space, it. Yeah. So we're setting like really good, my wife and I, deadlines where we don't work after six, no more screens. You know, we take some time to hang out in the morning. So we're trying to keep the work-life balance. I don't know if this answers your question. Yeah, but, whatever but that's comes our, up for you. Um, that's what we're, 
but I'm not like trying to achieve anything beyond enjoying now mm -hmm. and adding value to my community. And mm -hmm. as long as it's fun, as long as we're having a good time and we're helping people, I'm in. Mm -hmm. If it starts to feel like, whoa, I mean obviously there are times when yeah. it's like overwhelming and crazy. I'm not talking about just bailing whenever it gets hard. Yeah. But I am saying that like the goal is to serve and have a good time. Yeah. And so that's what we're optimizing. Do you feel like it's easy to say that as a guy who, who's like made $15 million off a single sales letter? I do, I do. Um, and, but <laughs> and like, is, this, is that something that, that, that um, you can like l use as a strategy as somebody starting out? Yeah, so look, I started out in an apartment in, in Manhattan with zero dollars. Mm -hmm. I had no money, I was working at a yoga studio, I was playing poker for a living. Mm -hmm. I like, I started from the bottom, now I'm here. You yeah. know, like, I grew this company to now 45 employees uh -huh. from, since 2007-ish. Uh -huh. And so, the whole time, I was looking for how can I enjoy myself. If you're not having fun, yeah. you're gonna burn out. If you're not taking care of your body, if you're not having a good time, if you don't have connection, what happens, and we both get to engage with thousands of entrepreneurs a year through our businesses. The most common thing I see is burnout because they, everyone's telling you hustle, grind, sacrifice. Yeah, that is me. terrible advice, yeah. I think. I think that is extremely misguided. Uh -huh. I think if you're grinding all the time and you're working 18 hour days, you're gonna be miserable, you're not gonna have any surplus, nobody's gonna wanna hang out with you because you're not any fun. Like, yeah. You, it's interesting that when you shorten that window and you say, I'm only, my work life is gonna take up this, I mean, it's hard to set these boundaries, but yeah. like, if you do it, you actually will produce more because the thing is, you can only give from your own surplus. Mm -hmm. If you don't have surplus, you've got nothing to give. So you have to, as a person, create surplus by taking care of your body, having some kind of social life. Like there's um, a bunch of science around like what results in happiness mm -hmm. and it's connection with other people. Yeah. It's feeling good in your body. Mm -hmm. It's feeling like you're successful. So having a hobby, something that teaches you about yourself, like building your life, it's easy to, as an entrepreneur who's starting out, have it be all about the work cycle. Mm -hmm. I understand, it. I did it for a while. Yeah. Then when I stopped doing it, my business grew more. So yeah. I think optimizing for personal good time and relationship in addition to um, your business will actually have you have a bigger and better business. And yeah. um, it's really helped me, you know. I know now I'm sitting on this high horse, everything's going so well, but it's like it wasn't always this way, you yeah. know. So um, if you could go back to 2006 or, or whenever it is that you got started yeah. and give yourself a piece of advice, uh, what would it be? I think if I could go back further to high school, because by that time I'd already learned this lesson, but once mm -hmm. I learned this, this was like a big turning point for me. Mm. The difference between interested and interesting. Mm -hmm. I had been taught by society that the goal was to be interesting, mm -hmm. to do cool stuff, to have, you know, to, to have people think I was cool because I was so interesting because all this bullshit that I could do or whatever. Yeah. But when I flipped it and learned that what is really effective is actually being genuinely interested in other people. In terms of communication. That, in ter well, just in terms of your relate, you get what you want from people who have it. Yeah. If you want to learn how to grow an internet business, find someone who's doing it and learn it from them, uh -huh. right? So a lot of things are gonna come from the people in your life. And what people are looking for is attention and people being interested in them. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to sit there and tell you all about how great they are, mm -hmm. all their stories. If you actually genuinely are interested in other people and you ask them questions about themselves and you really listen, like good shit happens, mm -hmm. you know? It's like really, um, it's an effect, it's a really, and you can't fake it. It can't just be like you're trying to get something, you've yeah. got some agenda. You've gotta let go of your agenda and goal and genuinely be interested in someone. It's like, th this is translated in our, our um, industry into like move the free line, which was an Evan Pagan thing for back yeah. in the day, I think. Get like provide value first. Everyone's talking about that now. But like one way to look at it in your relationships is be genuinely interested in other people. Yeah. Attention is a commodity. Yeah. People want attention. They don't get enough of it. Everyone's telling them how wrong they are. They're too fat. They don't smell right. They're not the right color. Mm -hmm. They're not making enough money. Like Everywhere they go, they're getting all this messaging about how they're wrong. Mm -hmm. And so if you're willing to like put attention on people and approve of them mm -hmm. and you know, find them right, yeah. uh, good stuff happens to you. So I think that's like, um, you know, this has now turned into a mindset conversation. No, <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're doing here. I just was, I just, uh, John Oliver just interviewed the Dalai Lama the other day. And what's striking to me about that uh, interaction um, is that the Dalai Lama is interested in John Oliver. Yeah. Like, like deeply Asking present questions, and, like, and yeah, like- Paying attention, yeah. noticing him. Mm -hmm. That stuff is powerful, man. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that as you develop that skill set, you'll be more aware 
of what your customers are interested in and how to add value to your community. You'll be able to hear what people are telling you. Send a post-purchase survey to anyone who buys from you and let them just write. Mm -hmm. Hey, how'd you find us? What'd you think? Where can we improve? What mm -hmm. products do you want? Just let them write to you mm -hmm. and then read that stuff. Have it publish into a Slack channel and mm -hmm. actually be reading feedback in real time mm -hmm. from your customers because those are the people who you want to know what they want so yeah. you can do a better job, you yeah. know? Exactly. So there's ways to like take this concept and apply it practically to your business. Yeah. So when you think uh, in the other direction, um, the future, yeah. uh, kind of like looking back at your career or your life, sure. what, what do you imagine you'd like your legacy to be? You know, this is the interesting thing about legacy. Again, when I look at the future of where things are going from a technology standpoint, it's messaging, business to consumer messaging, like that's a big focus for us this year. Right. People expect to be able to message. Nobody likes to get phone calls anymore. They want to message people, yeah. you know. 60% mm -hmm. of people would rather message than, than call support. So. Uh, I'm doing a presentation on Facebook ads, um, messenger ads and stuff at this uh, conference. But when I look at legacy, like I'm interested in having had the most fun and the best relationships. Like I don't care some, like look, I want to add value to the world. I mm -hmm. want to, you know, use the surplus that I am creating to do good things in the world. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, I don't care so much about being remembered for something. Mm -hmm. What I'm interested in is my experience right now, yeah. which is, what I get the most pleasure out of is connection with other people. So that's what I'm going for. And I think that, you know, if we are doing things well, then we will create a bunch of surplus that we can use for good causes and to help people who are less fortunate than us or who are, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I got no answer for you, basically. No, I'm rambling. You got it. That's it. Is, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a tough it, one. Legacy. It, it, you know? it is a tough one. Um, so, modern entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, we hey, named this thing entrepreneur. That. Dude, well, can yeah. I sign that thing? I really yeah. would like to. Yeah, but before you do, okay. um, tell me what you think about the, the the term modern entrepreneur. Like, what does it mean to be a modern entrepreneur, entrepreneur. or an yeah. entrepreneur today? You know, I think entrepreneurs are people who see things a little bit differently and want to kind of write their own rules a little bit. You know, like m entrepreneurs are interested in solving problems that they see people are having. Yeah. And I think you can be an entrepreneur from any level of an organization. You don't have to be running your own organization to be an entrepreneur. You can innovate and create and add value from any position. And mm -hmm. that's what it is to be an entrepreneur in my mind is figuring out ways that things can, can perform and do better mm -hmm. and, and be more fun and be more valuable for people and then making that happen. And it mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that you have your own company or that you're running your own show. Like You can experience entrepreneurship and autonomy and freedom and you can take control of whatever it is that you're doing and take mm -hmm. responsibility for whatever it is that you're doing from any position mm -hmm. in life. Um, and that's what I think it is to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, simply by just noticing problems and yeah. being inquisitive. And being willing to say, hey, being willing to express. A lot of people are afraid to say stuff, right? They're yeah. like, they notice stuff, but they don't tell anyone. It's like, actually talk to people about what you think you see because what you see is valid. If yeah. you see something, it's worth mentioning to someone and saying, hey, what do you think about this, you know? Because yeah. maybe you're sleeping on something that you could be doing. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks I really for having appreciate me on the it. show. And do sign our wall. Okay, thank here we you. go. You gotta get this one on camera. I got yep. something for you. Oh, what is he doing to our wall? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Don't worry, dude. People are gonna love this. You will literally hit hurdles and obstacles and make stupid decisions and waste a whole heap of money mm -hmm. every day. And yeah. you will get better at that, but yeah. if I'd have known that, that was normal and how many other entrepreneurs went through incredible journeys themselves to get there, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have uh, freaked out as much as I did.